Okay, on this slide we've listed out several of the cell surface proteins that we've talked about throughout the immunology lectures. I'm not going to go over the function here because we've discussed most of these in depth elsewhere, but we list them here as a sort of collection for you to review. I will point out, however, several of the co-stimulatory molecules in this list. Remember that co-stimulatory molecules are signal 2 in the three signal theory of adaptive cell activation. Remember the B7 molecules, namely B71, and B72, which are otherwise known as CD80 and CD86, are major co-stimulatory molecules, especially for T cells, which have the receptor for these molecules. It's known as CD28. If you can remember that the B7 molecules are also known as CD80 and CD86, you'll realize that there are two 8s here, because there are two separate molecules. Thus, the receptor for these is known as CD28. That is CD2 8. That may or may not be helpful, but if it is, you can use it. On T cells, there's the CD40 ligand, which of course binds to CD40, which is found on B cells. You can think of CD40 ligand as another co-stimulatory molecule for B cells. Of course, CD4 is found on helper T cells, while CD8 is found on cytotoxic T cells. Remember that CD4 and CD8 specify which MHC molecule the T cell can interact with. So if here's our T cell receptor, a cell that has a CD8 will be able to recognize antigen that's presented in the context of MHC class 1 molecules. If instead this is CD4, then the T cell can interact with MHC class 2 molecules. Do you remember our special mnemonic for this? Remember that our magic number here is 8. And when you take CD4 and you multiply it by class 2, you get 8. And of course, if you multiply CD8 by class 1, you also get 8. CD3 is something that we've not talked about yet, which I'll explain here. CD3 is actually a complex of six protein chains that are associated with all T cell receptors. The T cell receptor by itself cannot actually transmit a signal into the nucleus. And that's because the T cell receptor lacks a cytoplasmic domain. If we were to draw the cell membrane of a T cell, the T cell receptor would look like this. Where here we have the outer leaflet of the membrane. And here, of course, we have the inner leaflet. Of course, here is where the T cell receptor recognizes its cognate antigen, but the signal cannot be transmitted without the CD3 complex, which looks a little bit like this. Thus, it's actually the CD3 complex which transmits the signal into the nucleus when the T cell receptor is bound by antigen. Finally, I'll mention that several markers are characteristic of B cells. Here we have CD19, CD20, and CD21. This is relatively easy to remember because they cluster together numerically. Interestingly, the Epstein-Barr virus uses CD21 to enter and infect B cells. And you can remember this with the mnemonic here. This slide discusses energy, which we've already covered in another immunology lecture. But let's review this process once more. Remember, for a T cell to become activated, it needs to receive signal 1, which is antigen, as presented by an MHC molecule. It also requires signal 2, which comes in the form of co-stimulatory molecules, and finally signal 3 which is the set of cytokines which determines what kind of T-cell subtype the naive T-cell will become. Energy occurs when only signal 1 is received by a T-cell. This ensures that self-reactive T-cells, which may not have been eliminated in the thymus, do not become activated and mediate autoimmunity. However, remember that the system is not perfect and it's thought that self-reactive T-cells 
might be activated inappropriately when an infection is occurring. This would happen if a self-reactive T-cell recognized its cognate antigen and then at the same time was able to receive co-stimulation. Of course, you'll remember that co-stimulatory molecules are upregulated in antigen-presenting cells when they recognize pathogens. And it may be this inappropriate activation which might explain why some autoimmune diseases follow infections with certain pathogens. Of course, when a T cell is energized, it is permanently inactivated. Thus, energy is a way that the body maintains tolerance, which is just a fancy way of saying that the body keeps the immune system in check by inactivating those T cells in B cells which recognize self-peptides. As you see here, B cells can also be energized, but for some reason which is not exactly clear, they are not as completely inactivated as energized T cells.